everybody. Welcome to a special edition of Cooking on the Wild Side. Cap Mattoon here, and I have a special guest. Of course, we've all seen him before from Camp Chef Steve McGrath. Steve, it's good to see you. Oh, give me a hug. Uh. <laughs> it's good to see you and good to have you. Thank you. Good now, to be back. We're on a special turkey hunt, and we're over in eastern Colorado with Kiowa Creek Outfitters and Dan Audbury. And I, I tell you, Dan is the greatest you know guide that I've I've ever had he, he's cool dude. No doubt, no doubt. So we we went out yesterday and we got to do a little scouting before you got here uh -huh. late last night. Uh -huh. We got some pretty neat video of a big uh, gobbler uh -huh. and we were getting excited for you and uh -huh. you've been on email and stuff with Andy for the last week or so. We, we've been talking back and forth and I'm just, for me it was part nervousness, part excitement. Uh, what am I here, yeah, do? here we are. Something new, and, and that's what life's about, is experiencing He's... something new. So here I am, and I experienced something yeah. new. I'm glad you didn't show me that footage from last night, though. Probably just made me nervous. More nervous? So Yeah, so oh. I got two hours of sleep, and I would have probably only gotten a half hour otherwise. <laughs> so it's, two hours is good. Yeah. So i got to tell you guys, we went out early this morning. And, uh, you know, yesterday we went out and set up all the blinds and everything and, and got to spot all these turkeys. And so this morning we went out bright and early and we hiked up the hill and we, you, you went off with Dan and Andy and I went off to another, you know, another, uh, the blind, blind yeah. yeah. And, and so what did you do when this, I mean, I, we were calling these turkeys and they were gobbling back at us. What, they were. what were you feeling? You know, it, it was, uh, it was just weird. It was, it was reality, right? It was reality because yeah. here I am here. It's happening. First of all, it's early in the morning. But I, I think I had finally woken up and gotten going. Yeah. But just to hear it all happen, hear it all going, that was so neat. And the, and the, the anticipation. Yeah. You knew they were there and you could hear them, but the, the timber's thick enough you can't quite see them. You know they're there somewhere. Yeah. And then all of a sudden here you could hear those wings flap just a little and it come down and you're going, <laughs> all right, it's about to happen. It's about to happen. Oh, yeah. and, and see, they had told me that over in the blind that I was in, I should be ready because I'm supposed to back you up if you missed, yeah. you know, or, yeah. or if you wounded yeah. him, you, you know, you yeah. always have somebody back you up. Yeah. Well, I, I was aimed in. I was dialed in on him, but I mean, bam, and he went down. Well, see, and I, I'm not sure if it was the nervousness that made me do that, or maybe I just didn't want to have a, a girl show me up, so I just, you know, <laughs> and it wouldn't be the first time, nor will it be the last, but I had to do it. And uh, It was cool. It was fun. It's a great feeling to that get was your first an, one in that, it. Well, that was a great yeah. feeling, experience of a lifetime, and here's what we end up with. Uh, and then I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, oh, and this beard, you know, it's a, it's Miriam's. Uh -huh. And Miriam's are not known to have big beards, uh -huh. but your beard was like eight, nine inches. Yeah. I mean, really, yeah. guys, eight, nine inches, you should do. I was impressed. And for your first, <laughs> wow, uh -oh. you know, cool. This, well, so what does that mean? I only have downhill to go? Well, I don't know, you know, I don't know if they make a bigger I, turkey than a Miriam or not. I but, don't know, I'm happy with what you happened. Know, mine, well, and then and then we're all out there and we're congratulating each other and everything. We're visiting and talking and these guys are all, you know, guys are talking about the hunt. I'm standing there and I'm going, guys, wait a minute. I hear a gobble. So Dan, of course, he says, well, get in your blind, girl. So I grab him, we get in my blind. And the guys get down in the other sea, and he's got a tag too. So here we're calling them in, and and Steve and I heard one, and it sounded like it was going away from us. We're going, oh man, you know. So then all of a sudden they were closer. They you were know? there. And so we're calling, you know, and we're having, and and I'm telling Steve, I'm going, we got a turkey, and he's going where? And I said right there, and I said, oh, we got two. Oh no, we got three. <laughs> and then I said, I can't take a shot because one is right behind the other. I'll get them both. Uh -huh. And I told him, I said, now you gotta tell me, does it have a beard? Uh -huh. You know, these glasses, I don't know. <laughs> and he says, yeah, that first one's got a beard. Let's go. And when he cleared up, and I mean, it was seconds, Andy shot, turned to Steve and said, why is he backing me up? My bird's down. <laughs> dead. We didn't see that Andy had got that third bird yep. that was further back, you yep. know, away yep. from ours. So it was it was three for three, guys. And now I'm going to teach you something. All right. So we're going to try something a little different awesome. because people have had smoked turkey. Uh -huh. They've had roasted turkey. Uh -huh. They've had deep fried turkey. Sure. You know, uh, last spring we did the keg roaster, but you guys aren't doing that anymore. No. So we got to find something new. Yep. Well, we're out in the field. Let's do something new. Sounds Have good. you ever heard of melanesses? 
No. Okay. I want to teach you how to make... Mayonnaises. Mayonnaises. <laughs> no, it's turkey melonesses. All right. What we're going to do, I'm going to get you started on this. What you're going to do is once you get your turkey all skinned, the guys have got it all ready for me, okay? And you're going to take a nice, good, sharp fillet knife. You're going to stop, start up here at the breastbone, and you're going to start working your way down and stay really close to the bone. Okay. So once you get that done, this is what it should look like. Now that's clean. Huh? You see, I mean, the all of it's gone. That's better than I did those ribs the other night. How about that? So now, a lot of people say on a wild turkey, uh-uh, legs and legs and thighs aren't aren't worth a darn. Oh, yeah, they are. Don't throw it away. Let's use them. Oh, yeah. So, okay, so what we're going to do is I want to cut these up into, okay. like, fingers. Uh -huh. Like, the, uh -huh. you know, you've seen the frozen chicken tenders uh -huh. at the uh -huh. store? Uh -huh. Strips. Strips. Sure. That's all we want to sure. do. Now, I'm going to cut these into strips, and I'm going to put them in an, a couple of eggs, and I'm going to put some garlic salt in it. Okay. And, while, and that's going to marinate. Now, what you'll want to do is you're going to want to marinate overnight. The longer, the better. But you can start with a couple of hours, and it'll be okay. Uh -huh. You know, so uh -huh. we're out in the wilderness, yep. okay? We're at, we're at hunting camp. That's right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this, put it in the marinade, and then we're going to put it in the ice chest. I want you to tell everybody about this cool stove. Well, it's uh, it is a neat stove. It's it's what camps of kind of where we got our start was in the uh, stove business 20 years ago. Actually, this year's our 20th anniversary, and uh, our standard for what we're known by are 30,000 BTU burners. Each burner on these stoves are 30,000 BTU, so plenty of heat, um, plenty hot, of heat. cold, whatever you want to do, we've got it. Uh, you know, just like we'll fry stuff here, we've got the we've got plenty of heat to be able to do that. Uh, it's modular cooking is kind of the term that we use, and that's the ability to put a barbecue box on at one minute, put a griddle on it at another minute, just kind of, you know, change it and customize it. So it's your own just like setting. my big one at home for the, for the outdoor. Just like it, just like it. The legs come off of it, the windscreen comes off of it. It's portable, it's versatile, and it's powerful. That's the simple, easy solution right there. Looks like you're coming along on that turkey. I am coming right Slice along. That up. You, it's not going to take me long. But what we're going to do, folks, is once we get this all marinating, I'm going to stir it up, cover it up, put it in some Ziplocs, and then when we come, we're going to take a little break. Okay. And when we come back, I'm going to show you guys how you can fix something really quick, really easy. We're going to use your new stove. Uh -huh. Aha. Aha. The new oven. My favorite. And it's going to be a green bean Asian casserole. Okay. Okay. It's a lot. It That's a lot. Like a lot. It sounds like a lot, but casserole. ah, no, <laughs> it's going to be fun. Good. So you guys stay with us, and we'll be right back, and we'll show you that casserole. Well, welcome back, everybody. Steve and I are going to make this new casserole, and you're really going to like it. You know, a lot of people have different renditions uh -huh. of this casserole, but this is going to be a little bit of a twist with the Asian you know, vegetables. So that's vegetables. the beauty of it, right? That's you can personalize it, you can you add, can. take away, I mean, you, you can know, make it what you want. Yeah, a lot of people do different Perfect. things with casserole, casseroles. You showed me one time with a different kind of a casserole with the potatoes and oh, the yeah. cheese and all that in and the bacon. Dutch oven. Bacon. bacon. Yeah. yeah, so, and we're going to have bacon in this one too. Good. Going to throw a little bacon in. Okay, a little pork is good for everybody. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to, well, he's going to start the oven for us because we need to preheat this oven to about 350. Now it's going to depend on how long you cook it because of the altitude, the weather, you know, all of that. So, you know, a normal casserole anywhere from 30 to an hour. Okay. Okay. Sure. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to have a lot of people eating. So what we want to do is we want to take two cans of green beans. I've drained the juice off of one of the cans uh -huh. and left the juice in one. Okay. Now, the Asian noodles. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll put a can in, okay? Right. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a big can of cream of mushroom. Now okay. you can do this with a little can of noodles, a little mm -hmm. can of green beans, and a little can of, okay. you know. You can downsize it. You can downsize it, right. but we're feeding the crew. So now what we wanna do after this is we're gonna stir this up and mix it up really well, and I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper in it, and I'm going to put some of the bacon bits in it. Uh -huh, my so, favorite. Yeah. So <laughs> while I'm stirring, I want you to tell them about our new oven, because mine at home 
has, this one's a little different. Slightly. Slightly, slightly different, different. Slightly different. And it, it's, what we've done is we've taken the thermometer that used to hang off the racks here, and we've moved it right up in, built into it there. So it's a lot easier to look at it and tell you're not having that thermometer hanging the weight. Not that it was that big of a deal. It just makes it a little cleaner and simple. Uh, we've got the handles on the side too. I like uh, those. A lot easier I like to the hand. Yeah, because it's really not that heavy, but it's a little big. Well, and the thing about it is, you know, I mean, you make the most wonderful cover for it, you uh -huh. know. And I cover mine up in the winter nice time. Nice padded cover. Really yeah, nice padded. Yeah. But you know, it, a lot of these guys are out in the field. They're hunting uh -huh. or tailgating. Uh -huh. Or you was talking to me earlier today about the guys in their duck blinds. That's right. The, you duck, know, the pits. They the use pit. these in the pits. It'll help keep them warm and they're going to eat really well. And they're gonna, in the pit. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and we've got a lot of good recipes for those guys we too. We definitely do. So, so yeah, it's, a, it's just been a great item for us. So we've had it for a couple of years now, made a few minor improvements on it, but it has been one of the hottest items Camp Chef's ever introduced. And what can you say? It's an oven. It, I mean, it's just cool to be able to cook in an oven, just like you do at home. It fits a nine by 13 pan, so size. Well, and if you don't great. have the room, okay, uh -huh. what I like about this is the burners on the top. Yeah. If you don't have the room to bring one of these along with you, you've got everything right there that you need, you know, to That's take the kids camp out kitchen. camp. That's camp That's kitchen, kitchen right there. I mean, what, you know, I'm thinking guides, you know, we're right here with a bunch of guides right here. Yeah. You know, yeah. what, what would be better, you know? So, okay, I've got this all mixed up. I'm going to pour it in my casserole pan or a cake pan. So that looks pretty simple. That's just stir it. And putting it together. Open can, simple. stir it up. Yeah. You know, that's something I think that even you don't. I can handle that. Yeah. Okay, now, big trick here, and this is what's going to really make it good, is we're going to sprinkle the onions, the fried onions that uh -huh. you get. Uh -huh. We're going to sprinkle those all over the top of this. It looks really pretty now. It does look good. Okay, the oven's warmed up. You betcha. And we're gonna stick that in the oven. All right. Fits in. You wanna bake a cake? You wanna make biscuits and gravy? I mean. Chocolate chip cookies. Chocolate chip cookies. All of them. Yeah, How that's about right. it, yeah. you know? So, okay, we're gonna take a break. All right. And when we come back, we're gonna, well, no, before we take a break, <laughs> I want to show you what we're gonna do to get the turkey frying. I forgot about your turkey. <coughs> okay, let's move this stuff out of my way. We've pulled the turkey out of the ice chest. It's been marinating. Okay. And like I said, overnight would be better, but uh -huh. a couple hours is okay. Okay. But put it on the ice. Okay, you're gonna take this out. You're gonna lay it down. You're gonna open up your breadcrumbs. We're gonna use all of these, so I won't worry about my egg hands. You're gonna sprinkle some breadcrumbs out and you're gonna take the chicken, chicken. See, I'm used to doing it with chicken. This is wild turkey, everybody. Rather large chicken. Oh, le rather large and he gobbled this morning. <laughs> and we're gonna mash it out. So here's, okay. here's a thought. Have you ever tried, instead of using just breadcrumbs, using panko? The Japanese breadcrumbs, yes. a little crispier, a little different flavor. That's an idea exactly. maybe to break it up, try something new. Andy different. and I use that yeah. a lot. Yeah. And uh, we were at the store this morning and Andy said, let's uh -huh. see if we can find Great some panko. -like. Well, yeah, uh -huh. I mean, you know, when you cook this stuff enough, you get some pretty cool <laughs> ideas right. going. And the more mines you get. Now, see, these are, they're pretty thin. They're uh -huh. not real thin. Uh -huh. You want them kind of meaty, but you've smashed it out and your breadcrumbs are on it. Now what you're going to do is you're going to do these up. Uh -huh. You're going to let them set for just maybe five, ten minutes because you want this to set. Okay? Uh -huh. Then, now we're going to take a break. I'll okay. get these ready to go. And when we come back, we'll fry them up and we'll show everybody what our dinner looks like. I'm, I'm ready for it. And coming up too, I'm bringing in Rodney, uh -huh. the chef uh -huh. from Kiowa Creek Outfitters. Uh -huh. He is going to show us how to fry Oreos. It's uh, your recipe. I'll be around for this one. You, he's <laughs> the one that told us about the recipe and we're gonna try it. So you guys stay with us and we'll be right back. Thanks for coming back, everybody. You're really gonna enjoy these recipes. I'm telling you, they're really good. So we're gonna fry this up. I think the guys are really gonna like it. It even smells good. It's looking pretty. It's gonna be a good dinner tonight wild turkey you can do this with a turkey from the market or chicken tenders you've got the recipe now that's some good eats right there and it really makes me feel bad that 
Steve is not with us. He's inside packing oh, right now. Not, He's not, gonna... not so fast. I got my bag packed. I'm on my way out. Thank you. Send me the green bean casserole recipe. Have your people call mine. Thank Dear you. Dear little snot. He's going to miss out on the Oreo cookies. Okay, now we've been on our turkey hunt. We've gone out this morning bright and early, set all up. Three shots, three kills. I'm telling you, within 30 minutes, all three of us had our turkeys. And then this afternoon, you know, we showed you how to do the turkey melanessa. Oh, awesome. So we've done uh, the green bean casserole with a little extra kick with the Asian vegetables. And now we were sitting around the lunch table and I want you guys to meet a good friend of mine. This is Rodney Darty, and Kat. he's from Kiowa cool. Creek Outfitters. He's a chef. Now I'm a cook, he's a chef. So Chris McGrath, the one that introduced you guys to all the new equipment here today that we're gonna be using, he was telling us about a really cool dessert. Now, what was he telling us to do? Uh, he's telling us that, like we take like uh, we make our own like a buttermilk pancake batter, and then we would take like some Oreo cookies right here, and we would. Now take he the... said he said what we had to do was cool these. So if yeah. we're out in the field, we're gonna want to put them on top of the ice, you know, on, yeah, on top so, of the yeah, ice. So yeah, so what you want to do, cold. like if you have like a Ziploc bag, you can take a Ziploc bag, put the cookies in there and immerse them like in the ice and that'll keep them like in a that, freezer there yeah, for Yeah, there you so go. So that would be the easy way to doing it or you could just take the whole package and, and uh, uh, you could set it right on top of your ice and that'll keep it to a frozen temperature there for you. So that's where, uh, 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 excuse me, uh, like it'll be the same as uh, having it like in your freezer at your home. Yeah, stuff. okay. So see what we're trying to do is show you guys, you don't have to go out and buy canned foods or Roman noodles for dinner when when you know when you're out hunting i mean with the camp chef gear and stuff we're going to do a great dessert here i'm looking forward to this yes and as we're going to go right here we're going to take the cookies right here we're going to take one at a time and we should just dip one at a time or? you just dip it in dip it in like that and everybody likes fried foods we've seen it on tv and all over the south I'm going to get the bowl here because it says, Steve told us about 20 seconds on each side till they brown, and then you just dip them out, put them on a paper towel, and you've got dessert. We're going to do a couple more, and we're going to pass these around to the guys. See what they think about yeah. it. And I mean, how much easier for a dessert can you get than this? It's the pre-mix. He said uh, buttermilk pancake mix. We're going to drop a couple in here. Okay, I'll flip, flip while flooding. you drop. This is kind of fun, guys. Yeah, it's kind of like making your own donuts yeah. almost. He said to uh, have your grease about three, like 375. It's not taking long at all. I've never in my life seen such a thing, but we're... It's almost just like having your own little cookie fritter. It does. It and the Oreos that we got, I guess it's in, uh, for, the, for the movie, it has red centers in it. So kind of fitting for the, for the hunt. Holidays. Yeah. yeah. All right. There. So we're going to get these cooked up, guys. And that's about as easy as she gets. So. You want to cook them till they like a, uh, they're going to come out as like a golden brown there for Whoa, you. Whoa, they're hot right now but we're gonna try one. Let's break it in half. No. <laughs> oh, there we go. Have a bite. Be careful. Mm. Oh my goodness. It's really, almost really like having a pancake with icing. Yes, it's kind of like, you know how they used to do those waffle cookies with the cream in it? There you go. That's, exactly That's what, what it is. is. Like. And it was that simple, everybody. So listen, I want to thank everybody, Kiowa Creek Outfitters, Dan, he is the greatest guide that, that you could ever have for turkey. He, he also does uh, big game hunts. You know, check him out. And uh, thank you, Rodney, for thank helping you, us Ken. out here. Mm -hmm. You Very are a great so. chef. I've eaten a lot of his food. It's delicious. And then we've got a lot of other people to thank, Camp Chef for all the gear, I'm telling you, you can't get better outdoor camp gear 
and cooking stuff right here. Rodney's going to be having fun with this stuff, oh, I'll I tell you. Oh, I definitely will. I can't wait for hunting season. Oop. So you guys, thank you for watching Cooking on the Wild Side, and we're really out in the wild here at the ranch house after our turkey hunt, and stay tuned because we're going to have lots more shows, lots more recipes, and you know what? Cooking on the Wild Side is, if you got your wild game and fish, what are you going to do with it? Don't let it ruin in the, in the freezer. Cook it and share it with your family. It's good eats.